Okay, in today's video, I'm going to be explaining more about the spinning delta T or Merkaba or double tetrahedron, how it's functioning, part two. And we're going to get into the whole origin of how I got started on this whole thing and what led me to building this thing. It pretty much all started with me watching the Philadelphia Experiment in around 88 or 89. We had the movie on tape and we always watched it. So when I watched that, I figured out that all that stuff was actually not only probable but possible. And I didn't know who Nikola Tesla was for a long time. Once I found out who Nikola Tesla was, in the late 90s from John Hutchinson when he started replicating a lot of the Tesla experiments in Canada. Then I got really interested in this stuff. Okay. So when I learned about Edward Lee Skelman in Coral Castle, I started building all these concrete pyramids and doing all this stuff with torsion field physics. This is actually one of this is what Lee Skelman had in his flywheel. This is a 1912 Model T Ford V magnet. He's got 24 of these things in a centrifugal, centrifugal flywheel that he would spin by hand. He would crank this thing up and it would produce AC current out of it. So I got really intrigued with magnets and Ed's flywheel. Okay, so what this thing is, it's representing the seen and the unseen because it's going in two dimensions at all times, just like AC electricity. AC electricity is fluctuating always in two dimensions. AC electricity is always in space and counter space. Okay. Counter space is the drain. Space is the manifest. It's like the white hole and the black hole. The black hole being counter space. The white hole being space. To where there's matter, material, magnitude, magnetism. Magnetism is what produces space. And then the dielectric is what produces that vacuum-like pole. That suction. Alright. This is the book, The Montauk Project, Experiments in Time, Preston Nichols with Peter Moon. Okay, Preston Nichols was an electrical engineer supposedly at the underground base in Montauk, New York. They were experimenting with this Delta T structure in the underground and doing all these experiments using computers and frequencies and time jumping. This is what they're saying what a delta T is because Preston T had one of, Preston Nicholas had one of these things sitting in his backyard. All right. Delta T short for delta time. Delta is used in science to indicate change. Thus delta T will indicate a change in time. Okay? Glossary definition for the Delta T antenna because he was using this thing as an antenna because of its time function. Okay, Delta T antenna, an octahedral antenna structure that is designed to bend time. Visually, it looks like two pyramids sharing the same base. By definition, it can actually facilitate shifting time zones. Two coils are placed vertically around the edge of the pyramid structure at 90 degree angles to one another. A third coil surrounds the base. Shifting time zones was accomplished by pulsing and powering the Delta T antenna, as is discussed in Chapter 12. Even when the antenna is not powered, it has a subtle interdimensional effect on the nature of time itself. Alright, so I thought that was pretty interesting. So then I decided to build one that was going to spin to see what geometry it would start producing. Because 
There's only two geometries in the universe. A hyperboloid, which is the hourglass shape, and the donut, or the torus, the circular shape. That's the magnetic. The other is the dielectric. Okay? So when this thing is spinning, what it's doing, and anybody that's not using the proper terminology is in counter space, they don't know what they're talking about. Because you have to know what space is and know what counter space is to know what electricity is. If you don't know what counter space is, you don't know what electricity is, period. Because Nikola Tesla and Charles Proteus Steinmetz in the early 1900s figured all this stuff out. So if you're not using the proper terminology, you don't know what, what you're talking about. This is what it's doing. Like I said, it's shooting off in points in counter space. So when it's rotating, it's creating this flower life pattern at the center, like this. This is the geometry of the universe. This is what's going on. It's as simple as this. Now, like I said, when this thing is on here like this, and it starts spinning, you see that corkscrew with a right hand twist. That's what's going on. And then when it's on the other way with a left hand twist, it's the drain. Or when it's the other way, it's the fountain. That's the same, that's what's going on. All right, it's just like this. At the center, you have the dielectric. This is the point just like a magnet where there's no magnetism here. On the outside periphery is where you have the magnetism. This is where the Fibonacci is spinning like this. The 1618 is spinning the magnetism. In here, it's spinning counterclockwise with a left hand twist. This is unmanifesting. Stuff is going into here just like a black hole. This describes just like a black, what a black hole is. It works from the macro to the micro. Just like they say that an atom is 99.99 .99 whatever percent of space. This is how it's working from the macro to the micro. Lead Scowling and all these people, we figured this out a long time ago. But you just got to put it all together. And I've put all this stuff from all these people together. I've tried. This is simple stuff to understand. And it's got the vortex mathematics to prove what I'm saying. So this is pretty much irrefutable at this point. So what you're seeing when this thing is operational, it's actually sitting tip down. When this thing is on its back basically from right here and spinning as you see in the videos, what it's doing is it's corkscrewing like I say. That's the, what Edward Lee Scallon would call the spiral staircase. It looks like a spiral staircase, just winding like that, like a, like a twi like pretzels twisted together. It's like just twisting the whole thing, and that's what it's doing to the ether. It's twisting. It's twisting the dielectric magnetic field that's hitting this thing from all these different directions. And it's warping it. It's twisting it. It's creating distortion. Just remember this. When you're watching something like this spin, okay, your eyes can only see so many frames per second. A camera can only record so many frames per second. It's only so fast. Now, the universe is flicking on and off at over a trillion times per second. So when it's flicking that fast, you're not even seeing all the little spots between. You're just seeing it play out like a full movie. Well, there's a lot of gaps in the whole deal. So if the universe is flicking on and off like a binary pattern, it's the same thing that this thing's doing. You're only catching it here and there, here and there. What it's doing, it's jumping between space and counter space. And you're almost able to see it. If it was spun faster, then you'd really see some awesome visual effects from this thing. 
So, this is just some more about the Delta T, the history of it, what it is. And I think I'm just going to start running through my notebooks and start from where I started back in 2012 on this whole thing. So, thanks for watching.